In this talk, I'll discuss who pays for medical imaging exams in the United States and how the amount that's paid is determined. Let's begin with the first part. Who pays, or more specifically, who directly pays for medical imaging exams in the United States? If we exclude healthcare expenses of American military veterans from this conversation, the four major parties who pay for medical imaging exams in the United States are Medicare, Medicaid, private payers, and patients themselves. Medicare is a national health insurance program administered by the federal government for people 65 years of age and older, some folks under 65 with disabilities, and some folks with end-stage renal disease. Medicaid is a health insurance program administered at the state level for some people whose income and resources are insufficient to pay for their own health care. Private payers are commercial insurance providers like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Kaiser Permanente, or United Health. Some operate as for profit businesses, and some are non profit entities. And finally, there's self pay when patients pay out of their own pocket. Private payers account for the largest segment of the payer mix in the United States, followed by Medicare and Medicaid. The payer mix for medical imaging exams is pretty similar. Now, we've been talking about who directly pays for medical imaging services, but who ultimately pays? Or in other words, who funds these major payers? Medicare is funded by our Social Security payroll taxes, by premiums paid by its participants, patient deductibles, and patient co-insurance. Medicaid is funded by a combination of federal, state, and local government budgets. Private payers are funded by premiums paid by employers who offer their employees health insurance, by premiums paid by the employees themselves, patient deductibles, and patient co-insurance. Self-pay is funded by patients and their families. Let's take a couple seconds to review the distinctions between premiums, deductibles, co-insurance, and co-pays. Premiums are money paid monthly to Medicare or an insurance company to keep your coverage active, whether you use it or not. Think of it like the money you pay to keep your car insurance policy active. Deductibles are an amount of money you must pay each year towards your medical bills before Medicare or the insurance company will kick in. Coinsurance is the share of a medical bill you pay even after you've paid your deductible. The remaining part is obviously handled by Medicare or your insurer. There's typically a cap on the total dollar amount you're on the hook for with regards to coinsurance, which is crucial in limiting your total expenses in catastrophic situations. Finally, copays are small flat dollar amounts you pay every time you go to the doctor or fill a prescription. These usually don't count towards your deductible. Now that we've established who pays for medical imaging exams, I want to talk about how much they pay. But how is that determined? First off, it didn't take long for everyone involved to realize that it would be much more simple and efficient if the U.S. healthcare market settled on a single common approach, framework, and system for handling the pricing of medical services. In the United States, CMS has traditionally established the how, and everyone else follows their lead. CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is a federal agency within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that administers Medicare and works in partnership with state governments to administer Medicaid. So why CMS? Although private payers constitute the largest percentage of the U.S. payer mix, their share is splintered amongst numerous different individual parties, which means that CMS actually commands a much, much larger single share of the U.S. payer mix than any other specific payer. In addition, in the United States, residents and fellows work the majority of hospital physician labor hours, and Medicare funds a majority of this critical labor pool's salaries. 
So how are radiology exams billed in the United States? Radiology exam billing in the US is a little unusual because two bills are actually issued when a medical imaging exam is performed. One bill is for the professional component of the exam, covering, for example, the physician's supervision of the exam, the clinical interpretation of the images, and the creation of the written report of its result. A second bill is for the technical component of the exam, covering things like the cost of the equipment and supplies used for the exam, the salaries of the technical personnel operating and maintaining the equipment, the electricity, the rent, and so on. If this were McDonald's, it would be as if instead of doing one transaction at the cash register for your Big Mac, there were two transactions, one payment to the person flipping the burgers and another payment that went towards the cost of the grill, the electricity, and the rent for the building. So when we discuss radiology exam billing, we'll usually refer to a professional component and to a technical component. All right, let's start talking about how the actual dollar amounts are determined, which is influenced by two factors. The patient type, are they an outpatient or an inpatient? And the exam location, is this being done in a hospital or an outpatient imaging center? Since inpatients generally don't get imaged at an outpatient imaging center, there are three possible scenarios the outpatient getting imaged at an outpatient imaging center, the inpatient getting imaged in a hospital, and the outpatient getting imaged in a hospital. For each of these three scenarios, there'll be a bill for the professional component and a bill for the technical component. The system CMS uses to establish the actual dollar amounts billed for the professional component of radiology exam in any of these three scenarios, and for the technical component when it happens in an outpatient imaging center is called the resource-based relative value scale or RBRVS. While the system CMS uses to determine the dollar amount billed for the technical component of a hospital inpatient study is the inpatient prospective payment system or IPPS. And the system CMS uses to determine the dollar amount billed for the technical component of a hospital outpatient study is the outpatient prospective payment system or OPPS. Some folks may refer to this as the Hospital Outpatient Prospective Payment System, or HOPS. Let's show you how RBRVS works. RBRVS is the replacement of an older pricing system called UCR, for Usual, Customary, and Reasonable. With UCR, the price for a radiology exam or any other healthcare service was set by looking at what an individual provider or practice typically had charged patients in the past for the same service, how much other medical providers or practices in the area charge for the same service, and the maximum amount an insurer would be willing to pay, and choosing the lowest of the three amounts. While the concept of UCR might work okay for gas stations, it didn't work very well in an inefficiently operating market like healthcare where there is a substantial knowledge disparity between parties, where patients are generally insulated from prices, and where the parties involved didn't have a strong incentive to keep prices under control. As a consequence, the use of UCR resulted in upwardly spiraling healthcare costs in the United States and precipitated the need for a replacement pricing system named RBRVS by the early 1990s. RBRVS is a fee-for-service pricing system, which basically means that doing more exams will still result in more payment. RBRVS works by assigning any medical, surgical, or diagnostic service in healthcare a specific numerical weight on a common scale. Since everything is scored on the same scale, RBRVS would theoretically allow you to compare different services from different specialties with each other say, a tooth extraction versus a well visit in a pediatric clinic, or quantifying a patient's, a physician's um, productivity. The units of these specific numerical weights are not minutes or dollars or calories, but something called the relative value unit, or RVU. The more effort, experience, stress, or resources a service involves, the higher its assigned value in RVUs. The less effort, experience, stress, or resources a service requires, the lower its assigned value in RVUs. 
RVUs are converted into US dollars using a Medicare conversion factor, which can change every year. Uh, for example, in 2020, one RVU was equivalent to $36.09, while in 2024, one RVU is equivalent to $32.74. Manipulating this conversion factor up or down allows CMS to exert control over total Medicare expenditures. Now, let's see how things work with a two-view chest x-ray. As we mentioned earlier, with radiology exam billing, there's a professional component paid to the physician and a technical component paid to the facility. For a two-view chest x-ray, CMS sets the professional component at 0.31 RVUs and the technical component at 0.7 RVUs. Uh, occasionally, folks may refer to a study's global um, value, which is just the sum of the professional and technical components. But usually we distinguish between the professional and technical components. Now, CMS actually further subdivides these RVU values they assign for the professional and technical components according to physician work, practice expense, and malpractice expense subcomponents. So the 0.31 RVUs for the professional component are apportioned like this. And the 0.7 RVUs for the technical component are apportioned like this. Since the costs of delivering the same service can vary substantially by geography in the United States, CMS makes a geographic adjustment as well. Geographical weighting factors called the Geographic Practice Cost Index, or GPCI, accomplish this. And there's one for physician work, one for, private, uh, for practice expense, and one for malpractice expense for different regions of the country. The GPCIs are published by CMS every year and look like this. So here's that two-view chest x-ray example again. If we were doing this two-view chest x-ray, here in Palo Alto, California, CMS's GPCI table would inform us that the location adjustments for physician work, practice expense, and malpractice expense would be these. Now let's do some math. Using a $32.74 per RVU monetary conversion factor would give us these dollar amounts. Now, remember that this is only how two-view chest x-ray pricing works for the professional component um, of the two-view chest x-ray in any of the three scenarios and the technical component when it happens in an outpatient imaging center. Um, if this were a two-view chest x-ray being performed in a hospital building, the technical component uh, would be calculated differently using either the IPPS or OPPS systems. Let's take a look at the Inpatient Prospective Payment System, or IPPS. IPPS is the pricing system which encompasses the technical component of medical imaging studies done for inpatients in a hospital. But it wasn't always this way. Back in the 1970s, inpatient hospital services were billed using a retrospective fee-for-service system. What that meant was that a hospital would take care of an inpatient, and after the patient was discharged, the hospital would itemize and tally up the entire cost of the inpatient admission and then bill the third-party payer whatever amount that came to. Although this system generally guaranteed that a hospital's expenditures would be covered, it offered little incentive to control costs. After all, the more services a hospital provided an inpatient, the more payment the hospital would receive from the third-party payer. However, by the early 1980s, the system was no longer sustainable, and a combination of economic and political pressures to control costs led to the introduction of the current prospective pricing system for inpatient hospital services, which we know as the Inpatient Prospective Payment System. With IPPS, payments for hospital inpatient services are made at predetermined specific rates according to an inpatient's working diagnosis or diagnoses. The tougher the working diagnosis is to manage and higher the case intensity, the greater the prospectively approved cost. The easier the working diagnosis is to manage and the lower the case intensity, the lesser the prospectively approved cost. Although it might seem like a good idea at first to use the ICD-10 or International Classification of Diseases system to help classify all these different 
um, working diagnoses, there are over 69,000 unique ICD-10 codes, which is a bit intractable if your task is just handling reimbursements. That's why IPPS relies on a much more general classification system called Diagnosis Related Groups, or DRGs, that lump similar clinical conditions and procedures together for the purpose of reimbursement and resource allocation. DRGs take into account a patient's primary diagnosis, secondary diagnoses, uh, procedures performed, age, and other relevant factors to categorize them into groups with similar clinical and resource utilization characteristics. Instead of over 69,000 unique ICD-10 codes, there are just 766 unique DRG codes, which is a lot easier to work with. Since DRGs establish the amount of reimbursement a hospital receives for a specific episode of care prospectively, if the actual costs end up being greater, a financial loss will result for the hospital, which incentivizes hospitals to control costs. The shift from retrospective fee-for-service to prospective payments occurred gradually with Medicare in 1983, followed by Medicaid in 1986, and finally private insurers by the mid to late 80s. Each of the 766 DRGs is assigned a specific numerical service intensity weight. More intensive DRGs expected to require greater inpatient hospital services have higher service intensity weights, while simpler DRGs that are expected to require fewer inpatient hospital services have lower service intensity weights. The base rate establishes what CMS will pay a hospital for an entire inpatient admission with a service intensity weight of 1.0. In 2024, the Medicare base rate is around $6,500. CMS also makes adjustments depending on if a hospital is a teaching hospital, where the hospital is, if the hospital takes care of a disproportionate share of Medicare patients, and for shorter partial length stays due to a transfer from another hospital. Let's look at how this would play out for a two-view chest x-ray. Let's say a patient was admitted for a saddle pulmonary embolus with right heart strain. The ICD-10 code associated with this diagnosis would be I-26.02, which corresponds to a DRG code of 175. A DRG code of 175 is assigned a service intensity weight of 1.403 with a prospective mean length of stay of 5.2 days usually. CMS would pay the hospital $9,116.37 for all inpatient services during this admission, a lump sum dollar amount earmarked towards everything during this hospital stay, from the TV chest x-ray, to blood draws, to IV fluids, physical exams, nursing care, and so on. In other words, the technical fee for the two-view chest x-ray of this inpatient in the hospital is not separately broken out from all of the other costs of the inpatient admission. Now, let's take a look at the Outpatient Prospective Payment System, or OPPS. The Outpatient Prospective Payment System, or OPPS, is the pricing system which handles the technical component of medical imaging exams done for outpatients in a hospital. OPPS is modeled on IPPS. Just like how all the diagnoses classified by the ICD-10 system are bundled into big DRG buckets, the in OPPS, all the different CPT codes that classify every medical service under the sun, including a two-view chest x-ray, are bundled into big buckets called ambulatory payment classifications, or APCs. Each APC group, uh, each APC groups together similar services for the purposes of reimbursement and resource allocation. Numerical weights for each APC are established and updated annually by CMS. A monetary conversion factor establishing the dollar amount for an APC with weight of 1.0 is set by CMS every year. In 2024, the APC conversion factor is $85 and uh, around 69 cents. Radiology studies are categorized by CMS into seven APCs. Let's look at a two-view chest x-ray. A two-view chest x-ray with a CPT code of 71046 corresponds to APC code 5521, that's level one imaging without contrast, which CMS assigns a weight of 0.9918. In 
if the conversion factor is $85.69, the technical fee that Medicare would pay a hospital for performing an outpatient two-view chest x-ray would be $84.98. CMS uh, customarily will adjust this amount based on the location of the hospital and if the hospital has met CMS's quality reporting requirements. So that's OPPS. So depending on the patient and the exam setting, the different dollar amounts Medicare establishes for a two-view chest x-ray look like this. Since uh, CMS is a federal government entity, the weights or values assigned to every CPT, DRG, or APC code are publicly available, as are their respective dollar conversion rates and geographic adjustments. Dollar conversion rates for RVUs, DRGs, and APCs, and geographic adjustments are, however, confidential for private payers, but usually higher than Medicare's, since different payers face different market forces. To a hospital, the reimbursement to cost ratios with Medicare and Medicaid are usually substantially lower than with private payers at large, and a hospital's payer mix will substantially impact their profitability. 